How's it going, everyone? PewDiePie here. PewDiePie! Um, this is gonna be a video where I update you guys on my channel, what's going on, and in my life, why not? <laughs> Ever since the creation of his channel, if there was one word I would choose to describe PewDiePie, it would be the word, fun. But not for the reason that you might be thinking. I don't mean to say that it's because his channel is a fun time, which, in my opinion, it is. But having fun is why PewDiePie has been making videos ever since the very beginning of his channel. He truly cares about his viewers and has a real connection with his fanbase. And he's brought joy into the lives of many people around the world with his record-breaking YouTube channel of over 64 million subscribers. A feat that nobody on the website has achieved before him. But with that success came the responsibilities and consequences of becoming famous on the internet. Mistakes have been made, accusations have followed, and intense scrutiny has made its mark on his career. All of it the price of becoming a superstar from the world of YouTube. At the tail end of the 1980s in Gothenburg, Sweden, Joanna and Ulf Schellberg had their first and only son. They named him Felix, which stems from the Latin word for happy. And happy was the perfect way to describe the kind of kid that Felix was. A fun-filled and creative kid that loved to draw, specifically pictures of his favorite video game characters like Sonic the Hedgehog and Mario. Video games were huge for Felix. He loved them. And even though his family didn't own any consoles, some of his best experiences came from playing them. And while that never really changed about him, the rest of his personality did as he entered his teen years. He became more introverted and shy. His circle of friends became smaller. He was less happy and he was no longer actively expressing his creative side. In high school, his grades fell as he started to skip class. Instead, he opted to hang out with friends at a local internet cafe. That was always his one solace, video games. It was how he spent most of his free time during those years. This phase of his life lasted until the end of high school, when he started to come out of his shell and become the happy, outgoing person that he used to be. He refocused his efforts on school and managed to graduate among the top of his class in 2008. He got accepted into a prestigious and competitive program at Chalmers University of Technology, the very same program that his successful CEO mother attended many years prior. And Felix hated it. During that time, he was instead much more interested in making Photoshop art, something he was very good at. This was around 2009, and at that time he would enter his art into Photoshop contests. His work was so strong that it almost landed him an apprenticeship at one of the best advertising agencies in Scandinavia. Key word there being almost. When that fell through, he instead decided to put his efforts into something else that he was excited about. Making gaming videos on YouTube. What is up guys, my name is and I got a bit of gameplay for you guys, and this isn't Call of Duty. What the hell? I am unsubscribing right now. Picks and stones. I seriously want to take my diary and smother it on the screen with my hands. <laughs> I wouldn't wear. I would wear gloves though. Not really. Actually, I have one more subscriber than my friend now, so that makes it even more important. I think now my dick size is officially bigger than his. Okay, these goofy videos are from 2010, back when Felix first started his channel, PewDiePie. You might have noticed that his commentary was, for the most part, toned down, relaxed, and immature. Maybe even a bit on the awkward side compared to how he is now. But it still maintained that feeling of having a friend talking and hanging out with you as they played. That quality tends to be one of the biggest draws in the way that PewDiePie does Let's Plays, as opposed to the more informational style that other creators were doing at the time. Most of his videos in 2010 were of him playing games like Minecraft and Call of Duty, but by the year's end, when he was at around 200 subscribers, he uploaded his first Let's Play of the horror game, Amnesia. This was his first series to really catch on. 
people loved his mixture of lighthearted comedy and genuinely scared reactions. <laughs> I don't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. These videos led to a noticeable surge in viewership, but for Felix, it was never about how big his channel could get. What was important to him was the relationship that he made with his fans. I don't really care for numbers that much. What I care more about is uh, the support for, uh, that I get from all you guys. That means so much more than just a random number, but... And it was the advice of his fans that led to him incorporating a face cam in his videos. They wanted to see his reactions when playing horror games because it was just that much funnier. Little did he know, that change would kickstart his acceleration into stardom. Later in 2011, Felix decided to drop out of college. He wasn't enjoying school, so for the time being, it just didn't make sense to continue on that path. In order to make a living, he got a job working at a hot dog stand just across the university that he dropped out of. But despite how that sounds, this was actually one of the happiest moments in his life. Sure, he was working a menial job, but now he was able to do the thing that he loved most, make gaming videos for YouTube. As his popularity continued to grow throughout the year, he eventually got signed by Machinima, which was the biggest gaming network on YouTube at the time by far. That was in late summer of 2011, and was one of two major developments in his life. The other was meeting an 18-year-old girl from Italy named Marzia. Hey Marzia, um, I wanted to play you a song, and this is supposed to be one of your favorites, I hope. Um, Before Felix got signed to Machinima or dropped out of college, he took a small break from making videos. He spent that time working as a port captain and talking to a girl named Marzia. She was someone that found out about Felix through his YouTube videos, which were shown to her by a friend. She thought he was funny and cute, so she decided to send him a message. At the time, Marzia lived in Italy and barely spoke any English, and Felix was living in Sweden and didn't speak Italian at all. But nonetheless, they chatted all throughout the summer. He used the money he saved by the end of the summer to travel to Italy so that him and Marzia could finally meet. It was a bold move, flying to another country to see a girl who didn't even speak his language. But it was worth it, because they hit it off really well, and from that point on, their relationship had officially begun. Shortly after, Marzia would move to Sweden to live with Felix for a year before going back to school. It was the beginning of a truly magical time in both of their lives, and both of their lives were about to change forever. Joining Machinima was a big deal for PewDiePie. It meant the beginning of him actually getting paid to make YouTube videos, which allowed him to quit his job and really focus on his content full time. The growth and popularity that came from his amnesia videos led to him doing what any YouTuber would do after finding something that people like. Make tons of it. Or in this case, play way more scary games. It was during these playthroughs that he began to come into his own, and develop the on-screen personality and sense of humor that would come to define the first half of his career. You know, things like taking inanimate objects and making them into characters funny faces, the slow increase in his energy levels, and a crap ton of immature profanity jokes. He was becoming increasingly more popular, reaching around 60,000 subscribers by the end of the year. With his ever-expanding viewer base, PewDiePie wanted to do something to strengthen the connection with all of these fans that loved and supported his content, which led to the birth of Fridays with PewDiePie. The idea was basically a show that was for the fans. He would do Q&As, hold all sorts of different contests, video chat with his fans via Omegle, Pewds does everything. It was a nice break from his usual gaming videos. But more importantly, it represented something very important about PewDiePie as a content creator. Felix Shelberg started the channel PewDiePie because he thought it was a genuinely cool idea to make gaming videos. 
he continued creating content because it was fun for him. And when he started to get fans, he was extremely grateful and wanted to feel connected to them. He listened to what they said and looked for ways to have them participate. This attitude is the reason that PewDiePie has such a strong connection with his fanbase, which eventually became known as his bros. By the end of 2011, he had released multiple Let's Plays and his scary slash funny clips montages were starting to get hundreds of thousands to millions of views. And as a result, he was beginning to make serious money through YouTube. PewDiePie's numbers were through the roof breaking 100,000 subscribers almost as soon as 2012 started. That February, he entered an online contest called King of the Web and donated the prize money he won to the World Wildlife Fund for Nature. Throughout the year, he largely continued to do what was already working so well for him, but he slowly started to mix in a few Let's Plays of different game genres as well, like the game Happy Wheels, which ended up being a very popular series for his channel. No, not up, down, no, no, stop betting, please! Oh no. Something really special was happening with this channel, and it was starting to have a new effect on his life that he never really expected back when he started making videos on YouTube. People started to recognize him in the streets. He was becoming famous. What can I say? I'm not the most popular kid in the school or something, so it's the first time for me that people really tycker om eller uppmärksammar en för jag blir träffad ganska ofta när jag går ut på stan så eh folk folk känner igen mig nej du som du var We freaking did it! Yeah. Barrels, what's your problem now? <laughs> I don't know, it's, cra it's crazy how fast it went. I never expected it to go that fast. Honestly, I thought, okay, we hit one million, but it's probably gonna stop now, but... Shoot him! Shoot! Yeah! <laughs> yes, because you have to have a strong reaction. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it is. I, I, I have been watching. The whole thing with YouTube has grown so much lately. And, uh, yeah, this book of world record as the most subscribers to YouTube channel. Here we are. This is actually Marcia's room in Italy. It looks really like a lot of different Just sitting alone in your room talking into a microphone, that's insane, right? I'd have to be crazy to do it. But uh, if I started doing it, and it, it got a following, and it, I've just been going since then. The type of growth that PewDiePie experienced over 2012 and 2013 was pretty much unprecedented. There were a few reasons for his degree of success. For one, he put a fun twist on Let's Plays and he had the right personality. But he also started at a time when gaming videos were beginning to become more mainstream. And of course, YouTube changed their algorithm back in 2012 in a way that favors his videos. But even all of that wouldn't be enough without the constant work that goes into making new videos. Yes, playing video games was his job as a YouTuber, but the reality is that it's only a small part of what Felix does. He always came up with ways to make his videos interesting, did all of the editing, set up the filming, ran his social media. He did it all by himself every single day with little to no breaks. After two years straight of grinding, he wanted to start changing things up. For one, he took a big break from putting out daily content. He started a live stream show titled Broken, which he co-hosted with Cinnamon Toast Ken on MLG.TV, later uploading the VODs of the show to his channel. Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park, invited him to appear in an episode of the show. Trey Parker said this was partially inspired by discovering his stepson's obsession with watching PewDiePie's videos. With his rise to becoming the biggest YouTuber of all time, he naturally became more influential as well. There was suddenly this Oprah effect he had over the gaming industry, where featuring independent titles on his channel would lead to those games seeing a massive influx in sales. 
Similarly, he kickstarted the career of now successful YouTuber Jacksepticeye just by briefly featuring him on his channel for winning a contest. By September of 2015, his channel had reached over 10 billion views, another first in the history of YouTube. That October, he put out a book titled This Book Loves You, which was basically a parody of self-help books. It was filled with funny joke advice and artwork that was made by Felix. The book became a New York Times bestseller, and his release tour was completely sold out. He also started filming a new series, unlike anything that he'd done before, called Scare PewDiePie. The idea was that PewDiePie would go through these sets that were designed to mimic the horror games that he played on his channel, except this time, the scares would be happening in real life. Many famous YouTubers appeared as guests on the show. Shortly after its release, PewDiePie and company got started on a second season. Just a month before that, PewDiePie announced a partnership with his network Maker Studios, a Disney subsidiary, which he joined after a falling out with Machinima. They let him start his own sub-network called Revel Mo, that signed related content creators like Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, his girlfriend Marzia, and more. Needless to say, PewDiePie had a lot going for him. But something else was happening during this time as well. His channel was beginning to change. It started somewhere around 2015, but became more and more noticeable as time went on. His sense of humor was developing to be more edgy and include more social commentary. He started doing more videos that were focused on him just being funny and that didn't necessarily have anything to do with playing video games at all. These type of videos became increasingly more prevalent throughout 2016, until eventually they were the norm and his Let's Play videos were few and far in between. A lot of his fans were, understandably, unhappy about the change. He'd built his reputation on doing one style of content, and now he was evolving and changing, but not everybody was on board. But that's the thing about PewDiePie. He made these changes because he wanted to do something new and go in this comedic, angsty, commentary direction. It was something he needed to do for himself to be happy. And adhering to that philosophy is the reason that he's still making videos today. Now, if you watch my older videos, I might seem a lot happier. I might seem a lot chipper, a lot more positive. And that's because I faked it. <laughs> I think a lot of people on YouTube are drawn to positivity. And I think a lot of YouTubers are aware of this. What would happen was that I would play the game and be like, Yeah! Where's the game? Ugh. Immediately as I hit the stop recording button, I would just be in a shitty mood, you know? because they were, I didn't have fun at all. The thing is that this new direction of edgier, more offensive humor would open him up to controversies that would damage not only his reputation, but the jobs of those that he worked with and the platform that made him famous. YouTuber PewDiePie has gotten himself into more trouble. His videos, which mainly focus on gaming reviews, have been watched 16 billion times. The Wall Street Journal comes to Disney and is like, your biggest person hates Jews. Now Disney has decided to end its lucrative collaboration with the Swedish star. They found that since August, on nine separate occasions and nine videos, included Nazi references and anti-Semitic imagery. He was kicked off of YouTube Red, which is the subscription component of YouTube. And YouTube dropped his new season of Scare PewDiePie, which was as I understand it, almost nearly completed. He wrote, It came to my attention yesterday that some have been pointing to my videos and saying that I am giving credibility to the anti-Semitic movement. I think it's important to say something and I want to make one thing clear. I'm in no way supporting any kind of hateful attitude. For so PewDiePie went on to some page where you can pay anyone five dollars to pretty much do anything. And as a joke, he asked people to hold up a sign that says, Death to all Jews, comma, subscribe to Keemstar. And they did, and he was horrified. His reaction was horrified. And I think that says it all. I saw him his response video and I kind of got sickened oh really by what's happening to him they took parts where in my game other people created swastikas and my title of that video is stop doing this stop making swastikas in my game they took that as evidence against me they're making it out like he's a Nazi right and he's not at all Felix is a great guy he's not an anti-semite I feel like as a Jew and somebody who knows Felix and is friends with him, 
I'm in a unique position to talk about this situation. I just wanted to reiterate that my intention was to just to show how stupid the website is and how far you can push it by paying five dollars. If you're sitting there and wondering, is PewDiePie a Nazi? Then put your worries to rest because no, he isn't. The truth is that this whole controversy started from a joke that went too far, combined with the Wall Street Journal intentionally using clips of his videos out of context to make it seem as though they contain anti-Semitic imagery. In his response video, Felix acknowledges that the jokes were insensitive and stupid, but clarifies that he does not support any racist or white supremacist movements at all. But by then, the damage was done. Disney dropped him from their network, YouTube dropped the Scare PewDiePie series and effectively fired everyone that was working on it, and news outlets around the world were falsely reporting that PewDiePie promotes racism. In an era where fake news has become a meme, the Wall Street Journal did exactly that by slandering PewDiePie with a clickbait title and an article that they put behind a paywall. But this arguably led to something even bigger and worse than just damaging PewDiePie's career. It's largely considered to be the catalyst to something that affected everybody on YouTube. It was the beginning of what has since become known as the adpocalypse. Essentially, advertisers were pulling out from YouTube left, right, and center. They didn't want to put their ads on potentially racist content. To combat this, YouTube started looking for ways to determine if a video was advertiser friendly or not. They introduced artificial intelligence bots that would check every video and determine if the subject matter was safe for ads. Videos were getting demonetized for seemingly no reason, and the revenue that creators would make on their monetized video was now significantly lower than it ever was. But the remarkable thing is that instead of ruining PewDiePie's career, it actually brought new life into it. In the year or so leading up to the mainstream media's attack on PewDiePie, his channel was slowing down and converging. But the controversy and the fact that the majority of the internet took his side led to PewDiePie's channel gaining new momentum. However, not all controversies that surrounded Felix were because of the media defaming him. In September of 2017, PewDiePie was livestreaming PUBG on Twitch when in a moment of gamer rage, he slipped out the n-word. Now, this led to mixed reactions across the web. Some believe that any use of the word is enough to deem him a racist, while others believe that despite his choice of words, his intentions are clearly not racist, often noting that his immediate reaction to saying it was to apologize. In response to the incident, PewDiePie put out this video. You probably won't believe me when I say this, but whenever I go online and I hear other players use the same kind of language that I did, I always find it extremely immature and stupid. And I hate how I now personally fed into that part of gaming as well. It was something that I said in the heat of the moment. I said the worst word I could possibly think of, and it just sort of slipped out. I'm disappointed in myself because it seems like I've learned nothing from all these past controversies. And it's not that I think I can say or do whatever I want and get away with it. That's not it at all. I'm just an idiot. But that doesn't make what I said or how I said it okay. It was not okay. I'm really sorry if I offended, hurt, or disappointed anyone with all of this. Being in the position I am, I should know better. I owe it to my audience and to myself to do better than this because I know I'm better than this. Now, whether or not his apology was enough is for you to decide. But one thing that's for sure is that PewDiePie has proven his ability to learn, change, and evolve from the different life experiences he's had. And that's something that's reflected in his content as well. These days, he doesn't focus on edgy humor so much anymore largely because when he does it now, his videos get demonetized. But regardless, he's proven his ability to still be funny despite the required censorship. Damn it! Damn it! Let me go! Fun! He more frequently puts out thoughtful content now, where he discusses serious topics with a notable sense of intelligence and honesty. It sort of feels like PewDiePie's audience has grown up, and he's grown right along with them. Not to say that his content isn't still immature, but it's presented with a sense of humor that's a lot more appealing to young adults than his old videos ever were. 
He's also gone back to doing daily content, now with the help of hired editors. And his connection with his fanbase is still strong and healthy. He now has shows where he essentially reacts to fan-based meme submissions from his subreddit. And while on one hand that kind of seems like a lazy way to generate content, it's also really freaking cool that his viewers have such a high level of participation in his videos. Whenever there gets to be enough demand for him to do a Let's Play or have a certain guest host one of his shows, he does it. Because ultimately, he cares about what his fans want, just like he always has. And much like he did all those years ago, PewDiePie has continued to raise money for charity, helping amass over $1 million in donations over his career. We also got to see his relationship with Marzia blossom over the years. And this is just my opinion, but I think they make for an adorable couple. Felix proposed to her in April of 2018. She said yes. They're now engaged. Seeing PewDiePie achieve so much over the years has been remarkable. That's another word that I would use to describe his channel. His rise to stardom as a fun and lovable goof with the strong as hell work ethic is inspiring and astounding. To see him grow so much, try so many ideas, and still continue to succeed is a big part of what makes him so remarkable. He's become more genuine and honest in a way that has resonated with his fans and fellow YouTubers. And though he now makes millions of dollars a year through the brand that he's created, he has still remained the same humble kid from Sweden that started his channel all those years ago. That's why so many people love PewDiePie. He's real, he cares, and he's always having fun. So as long as he keeps making new videos, his bros will be right there with him. And wherever he goes, they all go together. I just want to thank you guys. I love you all equally. Uh, thank you all so much for commenting on my videos and rating them and subscribing and participating in any way. It just makes me happy. Um, thank you guys so much. And uh, some of you have been asking me uh, Okay, so you do commentators, commentating, and um, like, what's the next next thing? Do we want to be on Machinima? Do we want to be famous? Okay, I guess I guess it's a little early to talk about those kind of stuff, but I just want to address uh, this and say that uh, no, no, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be famous. Uh, uh, also, what, what kind of what I meant to say is that I crave for very little attention, and, and I don't do this because I want to be famous. That's the main thing I wanted to say. Uh, the only reason why I do this is because it's fun, and you guys are the biggest part of that. Like, it's because of you guys that this actually is fun, and that's why I make videos, and that's why I'm gonna keep making videos. So, thank you guys again so much. What's up, everybody? I'm Slush, if you didn't already know, and thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, then have the word potato somewhere in your comments, just so I know that you're a true fan. And if you like my content, then consider supporting me on Patreon. I'm just a one-man show, and it takes me a really long time to make these videos, so your support goes a long way in helping me pursue this full-time. If you want to get to know me better, then follow me on Twitter or on Instagram at official slush TV. I'm always active over there, so feel free to hit me up. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.